Hey everyone, and welcome to our video on the best note-taking strategies for science courses. Whether you're trying to figure out how to take notes for AP Biology or any of your college-level science courses, this video is for you. A lot of students come to their AP level science courses or college science courses, and they don't have the experience of taking good notes in their prior science classes because they're good students and they've never needed to take really good notes before. But good note-taking is a really important strategy to be successful in college-level sciences or AP level sciences. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about some of the best research-backed note-taking strategies that you can use right away to be successful in your science classes. Now remember, the process of taking notes itself actually can contribute to learning, especially if you're synthesizing information and you're organizing it in a way that's different from the actual lecture or video or textbook podcast that you're getting the information from. You can also then learn more from your notes when you go back and space out your practice and make sure you return to them at later dates and do some recall activities and active learning strategies with those notes. So both by taking notes in the moment and by using them later, you're getting learning benefits out of note-taking. Now you may need to change your note-taking strategies based on the course that you're taking or the medium that you're taking notes from. Taking notes directly from a live lecture may be a little bit different than taking notes from a textbook or a video. So think about how you're accessing the material and how best you want to structure your time and your note-taking strategies. I'm going to offer several in this video and see which ones work best for you and the course at hand. The one thing you want to avoid, no matter what situation you're in, is taking word for word transcriptions of the lecture or video or textbook. This is not going to help you process information and it's not going to help you distill the information to go back and study at a later date. If you need to go back to that primary source, go back to the textbook, go back to the video, go talk to your lecturer if you miss something important in class. But the goal of note taking is not to get an exact copy of the medium you're taking notes from. Thinking about how to convert a longer lecture or video or podcast into a shorter distilled note version is actually helping you learn. And remember, it's also becoming a study tool for the future. Now there is some debate among researchers about whether handwritten notes or digital notes are better. And even as a messy handwriter, I sit on the side of the idea that taking handwritten notes can take you longer and helps you think about the information more. You have more time to process it and you're more likely to distill then the information into shorter chunks. You're more likely to type word for word when you're doing digital notes. Now there is still a little debate among researchers about this. So if you want to find a happy medium and take notes on a tablet or something like a rocket book, not sponsored, that you could then go later and convert to a digital version, that's fine too. You can also always scan your notes if you want your notes to be present in a digital space. Taking notes on a computer can have its benefits though, especially if you want to insert important diagrams into your notes. So where do you start? If you're taking notes from a textbook, one of the best ways to get started is flip to the back of the chapter or sometimes at the front of the chapter, depending on which textbook you're using. And there is probably going to be a chapter summary or an outline of what the important parts are in that chapter. You can use this to generate your own outline for your notes or to get an idea of what's coming in the chapter and the important things that you should focus on as you're reading. Sometimes it's difficult for students to understand what the most important information is that they're going to need to take from that chapter reading. And the summary can help you out with that. You can even use it as a guide to structure your own outline as you're starting to take your notes. There also may be a section with key vocabulary or vocabulary that's bolded all the way through in the chapter and you can use those words as some of the words that you're on the lookout for as you're reading. Now one of the most popular note-taking styles for college level or AP science courses is the Cornell note-taking style. This is where you have one smaller column with key ideas, vocabulary or questions, and then the middle column is where you put your details and your examples from the reading or the lecture. At the bottom, there's usually a summary of the information that you are supposed to generate after you read the chapter. Cornell Notes are a really great way to process the information, make connections, distill it down, and then have a study tool for later because you can cover up that middle section and go through the smaller column and see what you can remember as you're studying. I don't really encourage students to do the summary at the end. In my version of Cornell Notes that I give my biology students, I provide them with a summary. There is actually some research that shows student-generated summaries after a lecture or a textbook reading may not be as effective as instructor-provided summaries, possibly because students misremember the important parts of the information or they don't do as a good job creating summaries as they should. If you are going to do any sort of summary at all after you've read your chapter, try synthesizing the information into pictures or a process or a diagram that you can go back and refer to later. So speaking of pictures and diagrams, even if you're not a good artist or illustrator, sketch notes are a really good way to construct notes for the sciences. If you're trying to figure out what the important parts are of a process or how something works, diagramming it out is one of the best ways to take notes for it. I have some examples of this in biology for cellular respiration and photosynthesis, which I'll link here, and you can check those out if you're interested. 
Even if you're not a good artist, which I am not, it's very easy to create sketch notes and make diagrams that can go along and help you with your learning process. This is also a really great way to study and synthesize information after you've gotten it one time. So if you want to try to remember everything you can about photosynthesis, for example, you could diagram it out, draw out the process, and then check back in your text or your notes to see if you remembered it correctly. Mind maps where you connect concepts or brain dumps where you write everything out on the page are also good note-taking strategies for afterwards when you're going back to study. One of my favorite note-taking tools is technically not a note-taking strategy, but it's flashcards. I wouldn't encourage doing flashcards while you're in a lecture, but if you're going through and reading a textbook, you can generate flashcards as you go along with some of those key bolded vocabulary words or afterwards as you're reviewing from your notes. Remember, just rereading your notes is not a good active studying strategy, but making flashcards from those notes is a good one, and then you can practice with those flashcards later as you're reviewing. Now remember, not every note-taking strategy will work for every person, and you're going to have to experiment a little bit to find the perfect way to take notes for yourself and for different courses. With a little bit of practice, you'll be able to take notes faster and more effectively for your science courses and hopefully create really effective study tools for your review. What types of notes have worked best for you? Go ahead and add it in the comments below. Give this video a like if it's been helpful. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you later.